r slash no sleep posted by you slash lost underscore the underscore words if someone gives you writing advice don't take it i haven't written anything in years so sorry if my ramblings are not coherent enough for your liking i just needed to write this out let anyone see my story maybe save someone or you from making the same mistakes that i did several years ago when i was in the thick of graduate school i found myself probably like most struggling to effectively keep up with the writing demands papers grants fellowships applications everything really required the utmost care and perfection just to stay on top of the competitive curve i began camping out in the library i thought maybe working harder than everyone else would somehow save me yet i was seeing no noticeable results that is until i noticed a member of my cohort chloe approaching me she looked stunning and the smile on her face radiated true happiness and something deeper, proper sleep. I hated her for that. I definitely didn't have any form of radiance, unless you counted body odor. I don't remember exactly what we talked about. All I remember was that she was so engaging and compassionate that I couldn't help but unload my troubles onto her, which she took gracefully. When I finally finished unloading my struggles, Chloe managed something I thought impossible, she comforted me. And it wasn't just hollow promises, the ones everyone hears that pretend failure isn't possible. No, Chloe had real advice. Chloe claimed to be a part of a writing group, one that had their own personal forum to post, get comments on, and receive encouragement from others. I remember she gave me a look after telling me this, almost like she was weighing me or judging me somehow. Whatever she saw in me must have been enough because she took one of my pens and wrote down the website. When she was no longer in my sight line, I typed the link into my browser. It took forever to load. I assume because it was on some small server in the middle of nowhere, which was somewhat confirmed by the dated web page format that greeted me when it did manage to load. The front page was a typical niche forum layout. In the center, there were grey subgroupings for top stories, submissions, feedback, writing prompts, and some other things. There were little icons below these forum locations, hinting at what was inside. I clicked the story section and waited again for the page to load. The new page looked very similar to the last. But instead of categories, there were pinned posts with the number of comments and their pages listed below. I clicked the top story, I can't remember its name, but I do recall there were 100s of pages of comments. I wasn't fully focused on the content at first. There was very little formatting or narration, which made it difficult to read. It was as if someone simply typed into a text file, didn't reread it even once, and submitted it with no revisions. When I got to the meat of the story, the formatting and grammar became perfect causing a strange effect that made me feel hyper-focused on the text. The story was of a man living with his mother. Every day he would wake up, walk to work, and get attacked brutally and killed. It would then cut to him walking home as if nothing had happened. At home, he took care of his mom, did normal chores, and then repeated the whole process over and over again. Each attack and night were completely different. It was honestly impressive how diverse the person's descriptive abilities were to describe this same situation without being repetitive. As I read, I noticed I was feeling sick, and my vision felt strained. Almost like I had been reading in a car for an extended period. Yet, I was so engaged and curious that I couldn't help but continue. I had never read anything like this. It was tough, but I looked back to the forum, skimming the pages upon pages of the remainder of the story. I tried to quickly to read the ending, but there really wasn't one. It was just the main character at home in his seemingly infinite cycle and then it suddenly was over. Below the end of the story, the web page flowed into the comments. I was desperate to read these, I thought they might provide some explanation or at least tell me that it was a part of some elaborate event or a special writing prompt. But they confused me more than the story itself. Each comment barely acknowledged the story and when they did, they made it seem as if the poster didn't even read it. They were a mix of random statements about the author or were what seemed like many stories themselves. One said, you looked scared writing the carriage scene but there was no carriage mentioned in the story. Another said, Op's character, dressed his mother up like himself and sent her to work, about time she felt the sacrifice he did on a daily basis. I was so utterly confused by all this. I was about to close the page and send Chloe an email asking if she had given me the proper web address when one of the comments stopped me. It read, Good job Op. You successfully got a new member interested. She is at the library now. Maybe she will join your mother for dinner and help you with your work. She said she needs help with writing, but I think she looks like she could write one hell of a good story. I looked around, 
half expecting Chloe to be standing there with her phone out and a smile on her face, ready to record my reaction. But no one was around that I could see. The comment didn't necessarily address anything about me directly, the only thing you could connect to me was the library and the difficulty writing. However, that was little comfort to me during that moment. It was enough to send shivers down my spine. As I sat isolated and alone, late in the evening, in this practically empty library, I felt watched. The hair on my arms standing straight up as goosebumps spread over my body. I refocused on the comment and noticed there was a date above it that said it was posted three months ago. I nervously chuckled to myself, this date not providing as much comfort as I would have hoped. I decided to leave the library. The weirdness was too much and had destroyed any hope for productivity I had managed to scrounge up. I just wanted to go home, relax a bit and maybe get some sleep. At the time, I lived alone in a small slightly run-down apartment complex. It was a small place, but luckily, I managed to get a two-bedroom, a decent kitchen, and some closet space. There was an additional small sunroom to the left of the living room and dining area, where I had set up a desk as my office. That night, my phone pinged its annoying notification reminder, I had received an email. I remember this being strange as I rarely got emails that late, it was maybe 10 o'clock already, and I was definitely not prepared to do any request that the person would want from me. It was from Chloe. She had sent a message with the subject help writing. It read something like, Hello, I hope you enjoyed the forum. I suggest you create an account. That way you can get your first assignment quickly. I know it is weird, but I promise you, the process works. Chloe seemed like a great person, our conversation in the library cemented that fact for me. But this whole thing was suspicious. First assignment? What type of forums gave out assignments? But. Maybe she was right. I opened the page again but was surprised to see it was different. It was an odd sickly green color, and the subgroups were titled differently. I thought this weird, but dismissed it as some reworking of the forum that I just so happened to witness. Regardless, I clicked through the sign up page, which required me to put in some information about myself, I obviously didn't put my real info, before telling me I would be contacted by an administrator to finish setting up the account. I decided to spend the time waiting for a response by looking through the forum again. The rest of the posts were like the first, odd. Each had nonsensical themes and weird comments, but all were unsettling. Eventually, my browser pinged. In the top right corner, there was a little red one hovering over a bell. I clicked this bell, which brought me to a message from the moderators. Thank you for signing up to submit to our forum, it read. Welcome. Your account has been created. Please read our posting guidelines. You should expect your first writing assignment shortly. I closed out, I wasn't sure I wanted to continue with this whole thing. Every time I was on that page, I felt nervous, the day's events a testament to that fact. So, I waited. I rather just find my own way to produce the writing I needed. A few days later, Chloe ambushed me after one of my classes, somehow knowing I hadn't finished the process to start writing. She wasn't her normally well put together self. She seemed frantic, her hair disheveled with bags under her eyes. She looked tired. She told me, that I had to log in and give the forum a try. She reassured me that everyone finds the method weird at first, but that it works better than any she had ever tried, if I didn't like it, then I didn't need to use it anymore. The manicness of Chloe's insistence was extremely off-putting. Though I must admit, I was still a little more than intrigued by the whole process. That night, I relented and decided to open the page again. Chloe had been so successful in the department that I felt it foolish not to try it out, my gut instinct be damned. Again, the page had shifted in unexpected ways. Now, all the colors had been inverted and the text was in a font I was sure was completely unique. The titles of the sections had also changed, now they were barely coherent enough to know what was inside. When I clicked the login button, the page alerted me to having several notifications. Apparently, the moderator team had reached out to my account multiple times with my assignment. I clicked it, ready to back out as soon as things got even a little weird. My writing prompt was to create a story about a haunted house. The main character was successful career-wise, though less so in their personal life. They had purchased an older, slightly shambled, home out of convenience. They lived alone, except for their companion animal, of my choosing. Other than those distinctions, I was free to embellish as I saw fit. I wasn't surprised the prompt was for a horror-slash-paranormal theme. After all, each of the stories on the forum were like this. I was just happy the prompt didn't set off any red flags. Instead, it surprisingly settled my anxieties. 
maybe I was just looking too deeply into connections, I was rather sleep deprived and school had been doing a number on my mental health. Maybe the comments and stories got to me more than they would a normal person and maybe the forum changing was just a clever way to sell their immersion factor. Whatever reason I settled on at the time, I gave it a chance and decided to work on what I could that night. I set the stage of the home's layout, the main character's job, that I based off my own dream job, and I talked about their pet, a scraggly cat named Bix. Eventually, my exhaustion was too much to ignore, and I ended my writing. Surprisingly, I finished about 10 full pages. That night I had a terrible nightmare. I was in the house I had written about, a black cat jumped onto my bed and woke me in the dream. A shadow crossed over my vision and painted the room in dark shades of grey. There was a man at my bedroom door, angrily peering into the room. His eyes locked with mine and his face twisted in a scowl. He was gaunt, his skin paler than possible, and covered in wrinkles. He whispered something towards me before turning and heading down the hallway. I was sluggish to move, but I followed the man. Once in the hallway, I saw several rooms on either side with doors open, allowing narrow beams of light to pierce the darkness. I watched as the man walked through these, becoming visible briefly as he crossed through, eventually disappearing back into the darkness on the other end. You don't belong here, I heard called out. I timidly walked down the hall, hopeful I was keeping my distance from the man. As I followed through the labyrinth I had conjured up, I watched as he descended a dark stairway into the basement. When I peeked down the staircase, I saw nothing. Taking the stairs slowly, I descended into the darkness. When I was about halfway down, I started to really question my decisions up to that point. Yet, I continued forward. You don't belong in my house. I was shoved hard and tumbled downward, further into the basement. As I hit the ground, I saw thin white fingers reaching out to wrap themselves around my neck. The man's vengeful face emerged from the darkness. He opened his mouth to scream but nothing came out. Suddenly, I was awake. My alarm clock chirping happily to my side. I bolted upright, felt around my neck and checked toward the door. Nothing. I felt exhausted, the echoes of fear from my dream still with me. It felt as if I didn't sleep at all. Luckily, I was afforded the luxury of working from home that day. Deadlines were approaching for some school writings and I could work on those where I was. Something I wasn't particularly looking forward to. The words for my school projects flowed easily and quickly that day. Better than they ever had before something that was completely different than my normal spend 5 hours writing nothing type results of the past. Even while rushing to get done, ending at a normal time of maybe 5 or so, the content I had created was good. Darn good. When I finally thought I had worked enough for the day, I closed out of the multitude of tabs I had opened and began settling in to finish my story. I was excited, giddy even the nightmare a good starting location for some inspiration. I thought maybe Chloe was right, maybe the only thing I really needed was something like this to work on. Get my excitement up. It was dark by the time I started, but despite that, I turned all the lights off in my apartment, I sort of wanted it to scare myself. Something was cathartic about how creepy everything was, that really distressed me from the day's work. I began typing, the words coming easily, the click clacking of my keyboard filling the air. I started by trying to copy some of the fear I had during my nightmare. I described the man, the clothes he wore, the sound of his voice, and the sound of his footsteps traveling down the hall. As I typed, I noticed a distant sound, muffled behind the sound of my mechanical keys clicking. It sounded as if it was behind me, so I stopped, turned my head, and listened. Nothing. I continued there again below or between clicking. I stopped. Nothing. I began typing very slowly. Typing essentially nonsense act gel a fatal jover and over to try and hear the sound. It was getting slightly louder now, until it dawned on me what it was. Footsteps, as if someone was walking up behind me from a great distance. Their steps landing in time with the clicking of my keyboard. I turned around but saw no one. I couldn't help but think I was getting a little too paranoid, the lack of sleep, anxiety, and all the weirdness of this forum had to be getting to me. I must just be imagining things, so I calmed myself and continued. I was just scaring myself as I previously wished to do, I affirmed. Yet. The steps became clearer, a second or so off from when I typed now. And louder. But whenever I stopped, turned around to look about my apartment, I only saw the dark outlines of my furniture. I continued with the story, ignoring any sounds that couldn't be explained. When I reached the climax, I wrote how the man terrorized my main character. He didn't want to leave his home and her being there was making things far worse. I wrote about the steps, knocking, and furniture moving, 
my heart racing with the description. Then a sound from my right, the unmistakable sound of a chair sliding across the floor. I looked over to my dining table. One of the chairs had been pulled out and angled toward me. I squinted to see into the dark corner. I thought, maybe there was a shape there. I finally turned on a light on my desk, which gave the whole area enough light to see no one was there. Then, behind me now, toward my windows, was clear yet faint breathing. I turned to look, confident I would see nothing, I was sure this was all in my head. It had to be my poorly sealed windows letting in a breeze. I was right. Obviously, I was right. There was nothing. Just my windows. There was no breathing, and the chair didn't move, I just didn't remember where it was. I was only scaring myself with my story. You don't belong in my house. I snapped toward the voice, jumping from my chair and positioning it in between me and any source of that voice. It had emanated toward the dining area, which I could still see was empty. A shiver ran up my spine and I could feel my heart beating fast as I bolted around the apartment, flicking on all the lights. I began searching each room, calling out in the most confident voice I could muster for anyone in there to show themselves. But no one did. There was no one there. I calmed myself by saying, it was just a neighbor I must have heard through a vent or while he walked outside the apartment, nothing more. I went back to my computer, my heart still racing. I was done. I didn't care if it was just scaring myself. It was fun while it lasted, but I was done. I dragged and dropped my story into the recycle bin, confident that would be the end of it. I was about to shut off the laptop and relax with some mindless comfort TV, get this damn story out of my head, when a chime stopped me. Without my clicking, a web page suddenly filled my screen. It was all black with oddly sized white squares in the center. These were filled with big black lettering that looked handwritten. Based on the titles written in the boxes, I realized that this was the story forum. It looked nothing like it had prior. Another ping brought my attention to the bell at the top right of the page. It ticked from 1 to 2, then 3, then jumping all the way to 10. Hand shaking, I clicked the icon. When it opened, I saw that these notifications were for comments. Comments posted on a story I had apparently submitted a minute or so ago. Confused, I clicked the top notification which brought up a new page. My story. Everything I had written, everything I had deleted, had been posted. I only briefly considered this impossibility before the comments made my heart jump. I don't think you are alone op. Wow op looks scared, doesn't she? I would be too if I were her. He's still behind you op. He's going to wrap those hands around your neck again. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed a subtle glint of white. I looked down, my eyes focused on my chair's armrest, what appeared to be wrinkled white sausages resting on the flat surface. They were fingers. My blood ran cold. Before I could even muster a scream, the fingers slid backwards and off my chair into nothing. I screamed, jumped out of the chair, and kicked it out behind me. I looked around, but no one was there. I was alone still. A door slammed deeper in my apartment. Clear footsteps emanated from the hallway. I timidly looked down the hall and toward the closed door that marked the entrance to my room. Light rimmed the door, flickering and dimming with what appeared to be movement from within. I rushed toward a table where I kept my keys and purse. Next to it, my kitchen utensils sat. I reached to grab a knife, but I bolted my hands back as a black cat leapt to the counter and meowed loudly. I backed away slowly, I peered around the now completely dark room trying to see if anyone or anything else was around me. There wasn't. I quickly grabbed my things, ignoring the cat, as the lights started flicking on and off all around me. Fleeing fast, I headed to the front door. Flicking the locks off with shaken hands, I opened my apartment to the crisp night air. Never come back. I threw myself out, leaving everything I owned behind. I could have sworn that voice was right behind me, feeling confident I just barely escaped its clutches. I fled the town as fast as my little beat-up car would allow, driving well above the speed limit. My parents were understanding of my sudden need to move back home when I pulled into their driveway late on a weeknight. I had shared with them some of my mental issues during my time at school, and I think they were just happy I'd turned to them when I was having difficulty. They were less understanding when I refused to go back to that apartment to gather my things. I tried to make it work in graduate school, but I learned quickly that was not going to be possible. It didn't matter where I was or what I was writing, as soon as I got through any significant amount of written work, I would begin to hear those footsteps again. Eventually, I was driven from my parents' home, the events from my apartment playing out yet again. Even now, as I write this, I can hear the breathing right over my shoulder. 
I feel the presence standing behind me, even after writing only 3945 words which I needed to tell you this story. I fear that if I write anything again, the events from my dream and something far worse will fully play out. So please, take my word for it. If someone invites you to write stories on some random internet forum, don't.